Yeah, they just can't see it because I'm, I'm I'm peering over the edges of their monitors, like I'm trying to see them in their underwear or something. I don't know. What? Whose underwear? Men or girls? I don't care. You I'm don't care. Focus. Would you? <laughs> Austin. What? You may hate me for this, but. God, what have I done? Gwen, help me. Would you? Be, by any chance be having to looking at Donald Trump's underwear? I will stab you with a <laughs> <laughs> Anyway. And then as soon as I was done with that, I looked over and saw Nephilim Free was following me and he was wearing a tutu dress. I don't even know. Yeah. But anyways, oh, hello. Uh, this is Coffee and Tea with the Christian Anarchist and Ospen Kane, uh, where we talk religion and politics, the table manner type of discussions that you enjoy talking with at the family dinner table. Um, so we're just going to talk some various topics. Um, yeah, Minus pretty much the that typically comes out of those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just choke on my medicine, but. <laughs> All right. So, for some of those that are new to the show, yeah, it's basically uh, interfaith and probably po political uh, discussion thing from two very opposites. Uh, me being the conservative fundamentalist uh, Christian. And Ozpin, um, let's just put it from his perspective. Uh, what, in your words, would you describe yourself as? A dick. <laughs> <laughs> yes, note, this is not going to be uh, your average show involving a Christian, so expect some language. I don't know, I might throw some off myself. But, um, yeah, let's get uh, started with some topics, uh, just talking some things out. Uh, how's things going on? In the land of Ospen, how things been going with you? Uh, fine enough, I guess. Had some, I had that crap I told you about that happened a few weeks ago, but that got sorted. The mm. other house that was actually we were actually looking at burned down like yesterday, so. Mm. And it, it was like an electrical thing, is what they're saying. So, yeah, that's the thing. Wow. Um. I am certainly happy that it we didn't go there. That would have been problematic, to say the least. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I like it. I like it a little bit warm at night, but I don't exactly want to cuddle the fire. <laughs> I, I'm trying to imagine. For, I don't know why. For some reason, that thought just came to my mind. Someone just getting up and uh, they want to, for some reason, cuddle with a fire. Like, just walk up and like, hey, fire, you want to cuddle? Are you drunk? Oh, I may be. I don't know. The tea is getting to me. How does that... What kind of... Don't okay, I admit... The Chinese tea. I, I admit, it was, it was moonshine. We Southerners are crazy like that. Yes. Yes, you are. <laughs> I'm not part of the demographic. Right. But, uh, yes, let's get to, uh... An interesting thing that had happened to me when I woke up this morning, actually, um, I tend to get a lot of hate comments from either King James onlyists or flat earthers. Both and, of which are idiots, I think. <laughs> oh yes, I'm agreed. And I noticed the f very funny thing about today's. That uh, was my chair. That was what? That squeak was my chair. Uh, hello, chair. We know you're trying to get attention. Yeah. Continue. So I got this uh, from someone, and this may sound bad just because of the name, um, California Unico Eth. 
I think he was trying to say Earth. Unico ETH Group 1981. When you misspell Earth in your name, we have a problem. <laughs> Houston, we have a problem. As they, uh, they're not on Earth, so I don't think they can call Houston for help. Yeah. So, and uh, I'm going to try this. And if you, some of those who are watching on the Google Plus thing, I'm going to share the, uh, whenever I can find a way to actually access it, the watch link. So, so that if you all want, you. If you're uh, streaming it on YouTube, which you should just be able to copy paste the YouTube link. Yeah. If that's what it's playing on. I don't know how to do it from anywhere else, though. Right, so hang on a second. I'm trying to. This is the first time, and I'm already messing things up. All right. But yeah, Osman, if you want, you can share that link with uh, some of the others. I'm doing that right now. All right. But yes, as I'm uh, going about waking up, I'm checking my feed. I notice this comment. And I'm like, okay, what, what's this guy got to say? Because I noticed it was on my Jaronism ger video. Because normally when I talk about Jaronism, no, it's not about the flat earth. Only if he's saying that only Christians can hold to that view. It's when he makes some rather weird claims about it, even though he's identified as somewhat of a deist. Um, but the video, the commenting question was from this guy, and he said, Jesus Christ is a fabrication and a metaphor for our son, the elite and new oh, world yeah. order I, worship the son. I saw that one. I saw that one. The new I world. I was just sitting here like, what? Oh. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how this guy came about. He's like, um, trying to type this up. Give you crazy your fabrication and make it for for our son. The elite and new world order worship the son. Religion is a hoax. Please wake up. You are insulting our intelligence, sir. I, 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 I don't understand what he was actually trying to say is the thing I, I I can't even I've met encounters from a guy named Pillbox um, I'm, I'm I've met sure. him too um, this honestly sounds like something he would say so I'm wondering if this is an, uh, one of them sock accounts by him yeah that, I could see that being a thing because normally when he says that he's familiar with saying things like hoax wake up and you are insulting our intelligence uh, kind of thing yeah, that, that that actually does sound like him. Mm -hmm. I didn't think about it until just now. Yeah, you know, and he's all kinds of deals. All That's right. well then. I I didn't even like put two and two together on that one because I I haven't seen him in a while. I actually think he blocked me. Right. Uh, a while back. I but yeah, I because mm -hmm. he used to say that to me all the time. Mm-hmm. Who was messaging me? Do you want so, to know? So, and also, if anyone wants to uh, check out the, we'll be having the Google Plus uh, pages, either tag me or Ospin Kane a question, and we will get to you on what, or maybe we'll discuss that topic if we get a good amount of time. But um, one thing I want to talk about now is something that's very interesting, and luckily we uh, get the inside scoop on a dirty secret from... Uh, everyone's on YouTube's favorite, uh, Brett Keane. Which I now that he, like, disappeared. He tried to, but for some reason he did a thing where it's like, Brett Keane died or something, where it's, you think it would be one of those. But it looks like all he did was he showed he was like on a, his last death wish or something, and then he dies with the deal. But then, uh, what was it? Uh, you hear... Thunderstruck from ACDC playing in a cover, and all of a sudden it, the image changes to where Brett Keane now goes back to his old uh, look. Now he's gotten rid of his white dyed hair. Now it's back to pitch black. Uh, it's slicked back. He now has uh, a a mustache and a soul patch. Does he think he's like the Master Chief coming out of cryo or something? What does he think he's doing? I don't know. He looked like he was full of himself though. What? But I, 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 I bet you that he's not full of himself in the sense of uh, his actual ego, but it's full of mac and cheese and beefaroni. I, I don't even... that I can't even... Yeah. You don't get to just decide that you're worthy of Thunderstruck. Yeah. That is not how this works. You have to earn Thunderstruck. Indeed. But the controversy is that he... Everyone used to know him as like this Christian or something. He would talk about 
and his for crying out loud it's his opening that has the picture of jesus on it uh with the lightning start playing with the final countdown being played yeah i've seen that and recently now he's came, he made a he made a video that he deleted within minutes maybe it didn't survive at least 30 minutes before he shot it and took it down um the video was uh, and I think I still have the original on here before it got taken down. Um, it's called Christianity, Islam, and Atheism Fail, where he goes about that as a theist, he has met atheists who always fail to prove their point and arguments, and he's failed to see, uh, see a Christian uh, make a good case for things. And he goes on the topic of the Trinity, and this is where uh, a couple I people I know. Mm -hmm. I thought that was the thing, was he was an apologist yeah and i thought the same too but so how do you how, how can he say that that's failed i, I don't know because he says now that he's a theist he, like he's just a general theist that's but, not how that term works <laughs> right that, but he, and he's like, looking for deist yeah that's what i was going to say is that he may just be more of a deist instead but like he said that uh jesus talks to him talks to god as if it was another person but um, and a couple of people that I know have gotten upset with this and now are looking to challenge him to a debate. And that's the interesting thing. I even offered myself on this table. So I'm waiting um, from either on Google Plus or Skype to uh, receive a notification. Maybe me and him can do that or someone else like Veckel or um, Faithful can get in contact with that. But yeah, I mean... And, but that's the funny thing is he made this video and then he deleted it within 30 minutes before some of, one of my friends had contacted or not contacted. He downloaded the video. And, and, here, and here's the other funny thing. That's just strange. Like, that's yeah. Just... It makes you very suspicious of the guy. <laughs> I've but, always been suspicious of apologists. But here's the... Okay. Here's what's more suspicious. He goes on about um, he'll flag you for posting his content, like if you're commenting on it. Yeah, or, I know about that. I know about that. And recently, I found out um, that he used a different licensing for his videos. Now it's the especially the one that it was labeled under was put under Creative Commons use. What does that mean? Well, that is the basic, um, most easiest licensing, but it allows pretty much for everyone to use your footage for every uh, thing, including the fair use. And so when someone pointed this out saying your video is under uh, fair use, so I can do whatever I want with it. Let me see if I can actually find the video. I think it was Max Trivium or something, or maybe the Atheist Chef. Uh they post. They made a deal where it was showing this. It's like, forget you. Uh, look what I can do. I'm able to uh, take your video and use it mainly because you have it under the uh, title of fair, fair use or the Creative Commons. And I mean, there really is nothing you can do. But that's when it. When Brett saw this, and then he's like, I now changed my licensing on my videos. Any use must be. Before you can even use the videos, you have to talk directly to me and have my permission. Well, first of all, no. If he did that, then that would only apply forward. It doesn't apply retroactively. Second of all, no. Fair use applies to everything. As long as I don't just upload your video and take credit for it, I can use it. Mm -hmm. That's how fair use works. And in other news, this video is going to be taken down because we've been talking about Brett Keen, which I've gotten news that... Just using his name is a violation of copyright laws, is according to... Do he's Voldemort? <laughs> I'm making that up, of course, but... They... Is, he, is this possible. he who shall not be named? <laughs> it's possible. If his nose falls off... That would be a scary Brett Keen. Ah, trying Even... to adjust in my seat. This is difficult. There we go. Right. So enough about my rantings. Uh, what about you? What uh, topics do you want to bring on to the table my friend um 
Is anybody even watching this right now? I want to know if people. Yeah, we are. We got one viewer right now, but we're going to see if. Uh... Wait, did I even post or share? Please tell me you shared this. Anyway, um, because mm. I got into an argument with Preet about it the other day. Okay. I've studied Roman history. I like Rome. That's a big thing with me. I do that in my spare time. I know how they did things and why they did them. Um, for instance, uh, you, you know what you know what it means to be decimated. Uh, decimated. Um, I'm gonna be dumb and say I don't honestly. Um, decimation comes from the uh, Roman term decimatio. Mm -hmm. If a legion, um, or if a unit were to say withdraw from combat against orders. Mm -hmm. They would literally line them up in formation and just kill a tenth of them. Randomly. Mm. That's what they did. That's what, um... Was I too loud or was I too quiet? No, uh, nothing. No, you're good. Okay. Well, you adjusted my volume. Anyway, um... Yeah, it's a just-in-case measure. Yeah, I gotcha. They would, um, kill one-tenth of the, of the unit to basically terrify the rest into behaving. Because what's the point of running from combat if they're just going to kill you anyway? You might as well stand. Yes, make a stand. And they're, like, Romans were very methodical like that. Every punishment that they had had a specific purpose, and they always did it the same way. Mm -hmm. um, traitors, for example, would, um, like, if, if, if um, a legionnaire were to desert, mm -hmm. they would, um... They'd put them on this big later later Roman like late Roman like during the Hun times, they would take them out onto a field, and they would like tie them up and set them on top of a big old pole, <laughs> mm. and just let them slide down onto the pole and die. Like it would literally go up their butts and kill them. Hmm. And that was again to because they, they and they left me that that would take days. And that would terrify the rest of the Legion into behaving. Mm. And there are multiple punishments like this. And the one I want to talk about is actually crucifixion. Because that has very specific rules on how they did it. And why. And when. And mm. what was allowed to be done. Um, and I got into this argument with Preet the other day and a couple other people about it. Um, mm -hmm. Because... Crucifixion was the big deal. You goofed big time <laughs> if you get crucified. Oh yeah. Because they nail you up there, and they just they just leave. Mm -hmm. They leave guards to make sure no one brings you down, and they just leave you. They'll leave you up there until you fall off. Literally, until you fall off. Mm -hmm. In the desert, they'd pull them down after you mummified, and that was about that was the best you got. Mm -hmm. And people are sitting here like what they get and like specific, like the Jesus thing. Um, mm -hmm. They're like, oh, that the Roman soldier gave him vinegar when he asked for water. The Roman soldier wouldn't do either. <laughs> right. He he would he would not be allowed to because he'd be mm -hmm. in, he'd be the one that goes up there next mm -hmm. for doing that. Right. So I don't know. This might be the might be the sound of someone playing devil's advocate here. But what if so? Uh, like this was one of those rare cases where someone wanted to defy the the Roman leader, I mean, even though he was going to be aware of the punishment and penalties. Well, wouldn't you mention that in the story? Wouldn't you mention that this brave, this brave leader in the disobeyed in the gospels. orders? In the Gospels? Yeah. Wouldn't, well, you, wouldn't you make that a thing? I well, would make that a thing. Right. Well the, well, the thing about it, and this is why we have like four different uh, Gospels, is that it's written from first person uh, eyewitness accounts the main ones that of like these were people that were actually there were i believe matthew and uh and john i think matthew and john or it's matthew and mark but then the other two especially luke and luke explicitly explains in the beginning of his gospel that what he's writing down is not his uh views but writings from various eyewitness accounts that he tried to collect and gather into one um, uh, one a uh, gospel that he was uh writing down, so it's a matter of rather of what the person saw and knew. So it's had to have been written in a first person, uh, perspective. 
Well, no, what I mean is that Legionnaire would have been stripped of his armor right then, and he'd be up there the same day. All right, so right there, right... Right then and there, the other Legionnaires mm -hmm. would have grabbed him and basically beaten him and then put him on the cross. Mm -hmm. And that's if he was lucky. They might instead torture him. Mm -hmm. Which, either way, that would be public, too. <laughs> mm -hmm. He'd be flawed. This thing is, I agree and understand the concept of what oh, you're getting yeah. at. Am I good? Yep, you're good. Okay. Just a, I'm hearing a loud fan. Yeah, um, for, I, I was turned away from the fan. Uh, for everyone's reference, I had to hook up like an Xbox controller to my computer and rig up all this crap, and my controller just fell. Uh, <laughs> his controller fell. Yeah, I got like 12 cords around my head. I'm sorry, I apologize. 12 Dude, cords. All the cords. All the cords. I got cords for days. I hate you so much right now. <laughs> I was gonna make that reference. I was gonna say it, but no, no. You had to beat me. Well, yeah. I have to. But yes, he would be flogged and either mm -hmm. up there the next day or that very day. Mm -hmm. he, he might get a day if they like him. Right. And here, but here's the thing that I get, um, from what I understand, because I understand your perspective, um, oh. but I don't know, it's possible for certain things that are, that happen to be unrecorded, but that's, that's the other thing. That's one of the things you can't just say, oh, I have an absolute knowledge of it, yeah, that no, this could have no. happened. That's I'm just that, saying, that, it doesn't make any sense for a legionnaire to have done either thing, to either mm -hmm. offer water, to give it, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Or to replace it with vinegar. Right. Neither case makes any sense mm -hmm. whatsoever. Right. Why would a legionnaire do that? Mm -hmm. Like, what is motivating this legionnaire? Mm -hmm. Is my effect. Right. Um, plus, especially when you realize like how Rome worked, like what they were built on, they mm -hmm. were built on discipline. And they instilled that discipline through fear. Oh, yes. And, like, a, a thing to note with, with crucifixion, by the way, while I'm talking about this, is that it's actually not meant to punish the person who broke the law. It's meant to scare everyone else. Like, because this is what's going to happen to them if they don't, if they do the same thing. It, that's why it was also used on slaves. Like, if a slave tried to rebel or ran away or struck his master or something like that, on the cross with ye. <laughs> they and they had set, they had like spots in their cities set aside for this because they left them up there for days, weeks. It was not mm -hmm. a pretty thing, but it's that's just part of the methodology. Mm -hmm. Romans were dicks. <laughs> Apparently, Romans. Well, you can say that. I'm just going to say Romans are fallacies. Basically, they were not nice people, even they to were. each other. And that's one of the things also to keep an interest in mind. This, this is me going to my Bible nerd uh, deal. The interesting thing was uh, the Apostle Paul knew that Rome, I guess, was the uh, was full of crazy people and was very ruthless. And I think part of that is mentioned within his uh, Romans uh, epistle that he wrote. All right, so <clears throat> let's see what. What was, oh yes, uh, we're gonna. I was gonna mention this story. I'm sure this story has been going around quite a while, and people are familiar with it. The affluenza teen, Ethan Couch, the guy. Oh, that. that yes. That the, uh, little shitter. Yeah, the. I, uh, I do not like him. I want nah, to. And good and good thing too, because apparently the judge has moved the affluenza teen's uh, case to adult court now. So Good. it's going to be moved to an adult court so that he would face 120 days in jail, and then he has to finish a 10-year probation. Nice. Now the rest of the world will stop laughing at us. Indeed. Or at least if we, if we, get, rid of, if we can get Trump off the fucking presidential ballot, then they'll stop laughing at us for sure. You know you're, it's a bad sign when not only do you have the Pope saying you're not a Christian, but you even have the conservative fun, fundy Christians like Michael Brown. Uh, calling you out. 
on this. Yeah. Stuff. And it's like, I just go, I'm not going to build the wall. Refuses to talk about how he's going to fund his giant king wall. From what I hear, from what I hear he's going to pay other people to do it. With what money? Um, well, that actually, yeah, good question. Not pay other people to do it. They pay him. Yeah, he wants to get okay. Mexico to pay for it. Yeah, what? Well, Go gonna get the money. Where? Yeah, about to sound like I'm being really bad here, but like. No, dude, we don't have the money. We can't afford it. Yeah, we can't afford it. Mexico, and, we're richer than Mexico. Well, That's fine to correction, say. we can't afford it, but Donald Trump has all his money. He needs to spend it himself if he's really wanting to build that much of a big wall. He can't afford it. Good point. The billionaire it would cost trillions of dollars. Trillions. Yep. Trillions. Because you have to build all of that wall. The supplies have to come in. You need the labor. You have to have inspection. He's wanting to make them so tall. He's wanting to make them so thick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is just a, it's a ludicrous idea. Yeah. And here's the and the other funny thing is that apparently he's getting uh, Ted Cruz is starting to win and beat him in yeah, a couple 3 of the in several key spots. Oh yeah. So that's getting me some hope. I mean, I could be fine uh, with either Ted Cruz as Republican nominee or Bernie Sanders as Democratic. I don't want Clinton and I don't want Trump. I'd, st I'd vote Clinton over Trump. I'm mm -hmm. just saying. But what? Yeah. Because, I mean, at least she doesn't want to ban religions. That's my, mm -hmm. that's my big thing with him. That's my big thing. That's the big no no. Yeah, he's and he wants so he wants to ban other religions. Yes, he wants to ban all Muslim immigration, visitation, and transportation into the United States. Mm -hmm. Temporarily, of course. Temporarily. But he's also not give a, giving a time frame on that. On how, how temporary is this. That has never been addressed. People Remi try to say, oh, it'll be three years. But there is no quotation from him or documentation from him saying that. That's just a thing that people started saying. Mm -hmm. well, you know who one of my least favorite celebrities, or at least not celebrities, but like people that watch, uh, that I watch is that focuses on Christianity and politics? Who? Oh. Uh, Brian Fisher. I recognize that name, but I don't know why. He's, and I have this horrible feeling that I'm about to find out. He's a uh, one of the members of the American Family Association. Uh, I forget what his radio show is called, but he's well known for making a lot of statements. Like he once said that Hitler and the Nazi the Nazi Party was founded in a gay bar, and that a majority of the uh, Nazis were homosexuals, and that Hitler was a gay man himself. Yeah. <laughs> Hitler had a girlfriend. Yeah, right. right, but they the but and he gets this from a uh, German historian or something that claims that on this stuff, saying that uh, it, these were just like cover ups that he was seeing people in secret who were his actual gay lovers, and that one of his uh uh is he is he aware that to be a member of the SS you had to be Christian, preferably Catholic. I'm pretty sure nah, he probably didn't. Um, once again, I think this is one of those brainwashing things, and Brian Fisher was yeah. brainwashed into it. That's just, what the hell? Read Mein Kampf. Read Mein Kampf, yeah. Unfortunately, that, of course, has got its copyrights run out. Just read the book. Mm hmm. It'll try the irony. <laughs> yeah. So, an interesting recent story that's happened uh, this was posted on February 18th. Let me see what the actual story is from uh, the good people known as the white white ugh, right wing watch. I can't say it fast. Um, that name scares me for so many reasons. Why? I, I, I don't know why. It just does. Well, so it says, the article is Brian Fisher says, God took Antonin Scalia. And for some of those who live under a rock, Antonin Scalia is the, uh, the Supreme Court guy that had recently passed away. Um, I know him well personally uh, because he was the guy that stood up against the censorship of video games 
but of course I'm guessing Ospin has a lot more that he knows about oh, this guy. Oh boy. What did he do exactly besides he's, that? He's also against gay rights, um, women's rights, and all manner and type and reason of abortion, including emergency. Like, In so, so even if there was a person that said that, that they were to die uh, given birth, that it still wouldn't be allowed? No, he advocated against that and pushed it all the time. Wow. Yeah, he's dead now. <laughs> I mean, I've seen a lot of pro-lifers that would be okay with at least just that option alone to, you know, just in case someone dies. Yeah. But for this guy to even go as far as that completely, uh, I don't know. I guess he's a very consistent and dedicated pro-lifer, I guess. Apparently not, considering he's dead. <laughs> We're going to make a lot of bad jokes about that one if we keep on Oh, he doesn't lose it. He doesn't lose it. Right, I also so don't like the term pro-life, because most people you meet that are, are quote-unquote pro-life support, like, every manner of war and the death penalty, like, yeah. all the time. Mm -hmm. You don't get to use this term, sir. <laughs> so, and th here's the thing that I find very good and consistent with what George Carlin brought up in one of his stand-ups, where it's, that's the funny thing, you hear about them talking about, you know, let the, uh, the fetus be treated equally as a human being, but how come whenever there's a Whenever there's a miscarriage, they don't get a funeral treated for the for the dead fetus, just like any other human being. How come when someone says, oh, we have two kids and one on the way, they don't just say they have three kids? Just a little consistency is all. Yeah, my favorite is, um, uh, I think it was Bill Maher that said it. It was like, they, they these guys really, really care about these babies right up until they're babies. Exactly. <laughs> then they don't care. Yep. They want so, them to live so bad, and then they're born, and then they don't care. So Brian Fisher says that God took Anton and Scalia home to make SCOTUS the central issue in the election. I don't see how this is relevant, considering no one's really talking about it. Was uh, SCOTUS? Yeah, nobody's really talking about like the new, um, like who they're going to put on the on the Supreme Court. I mean, Bernie's too busy helping. He he went to see some protesters like a few days ago. Right. They were protesting uh, bad work conditions. I forget who it was. Uh, I saw a news article on this somewhere earlier, but uh, someone is telling Obama that he needs to vote for the person already. And I, I don't know who this woman is. It's it's a woman, and I don't know exactly what her. Uh, if Obama's intelligent, Sandra O'Connor. I believe. If Obama is intelligent, he'll say he supports Trump. <laughs> Because so many people hate him, just to hate him, that if he did that, he would probably end up getting tons of votes on either Hillary or most likely Bernie. But if he were to come out and say, I support Bernie Sanders, you know the Republicans would take that and run like a fucking drug fiend would with some psycho. Mm -hmm. So, let's see. According to the, right, here's the quote from Fisher concerning what he said in the issue. He says, I believe God took, okay, quote, I believe God took Antonin Scalia home. Antonius, Antonin Scalia shows up and God says, well, hold on a second. Someone's calling me. Well, declining the call. We're in the middle of a show right now. Before I, uh, I keep getting interrupted from Brandon. Is this, the one where, is this the one where God's like, I'm sorry, sir, we're trying to decide if this is the best best for you? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Here, here's, what it's, here's what he says. He says, well done, good and faithful servant. You lived out every one of the days that I had written for you in my book. Welcome home. And then, of course, uh, Fisher's quoting himself, his own self now. Um, and the timing of this, I believe, God was arranging so that the issue of in this election would be focused on the Supreme Court so that the Supreme Court replacement would be the defining issue of this campaign because God knows that we're running out of chances. This is God in his grace calling Antonin Scalia home to his reward in order to make this the defining issue of the 2016 campaign. That's just, I can't even, that's stupid. Yeah. That's no. The, the biggest issues are like fiscal ones. Mm-hmm. Pretty much. 
Yeah, so I found, yeah, the person was a Sandra Day O'Connor was the person who's trying to bring this up about the Supreme Court deal saying Obama needs to make the Supreme Court decision and that Obama doesn't need to wait any longer to nominate. If he tries to, they're just going to filibuster him. People mm -hmm. have flat out said that that's what they'll do. Personally, I think he needs to just focus on wrapping up other things that he can do. I th honestly, I think he should recommend someone um, just to distract them while he pushes the other policies he's trying to get through through. Mm -hmm. Because they've all, they've all said they'll filibuster whatever he tries to appoint on the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. um, is it bad that it took me a second to realize what SCOTUS was? But <laughs> Uh, I, don't I, know, I, I, think I, I blanked on that term for some reason for a good 20 minutes. Yeah. Also, I am giving you a story right here that I, I found. Yes. Oh, what do we got? I am giving you the link. All right. I'm guessing you want me to read it because of my, my good looking voice, my sound, good sounding voice. Oh, no, you don't have to read it out loud. Just mm -hmm. look at it. Yeah. <laughs> you can probably look at the uh, title. <laughs> Oh, I think oh, I've God. seen this one before. Yeah, this is, this is. I love this. I love it when stuff okay. like this happens. Yes, I love it when stuff like this happens as well because the, the, they get very ironic at times too. So, the quote here's the story, and this was from uh, from the Metro dot uh, co dot uk website. It's a news uh, organization in the United Kingdom, based mm -hmm. in London. Right, so we have the t the article being an anti-gay hate group accidentally raised thousands for an LGBT event. And according to the article, uh, it says, though, the minus 18, Victoria's, one more gives a say. Okay, so I'm guessing that's the name of the event. The minus 18 Victorian same-sex gen gender diverse formal gives a safe space for teenagers who do not identify as uh, straight. Those in attendance can dress however they want, act however they want, and bring whomever they want. Okay, I I like the part where it says, you know, act however you want, bring whomever you want. But I'm not sure entirely dress however you want. I mean, I'm sure that means, you know, if, if you want to be a guy, dress in a, a, su a suit or a... Yeah, it's dress. within reason. That it, it posts that you have to wear actual clothing and stuff like that. And right, because I was about to say... if you are gay, you can be gay. Mm-hmm. It's I was about to fun. say, if if someone goes to the formal, the Victorian same-sex uh, formal uh, dance, imagine one friend of mine always said he wanted to go to some event dressed up as a Dr. Frankenfurter from Rocky Horror Picture. No, that wouldn't be okay, but it's like, it's mm -hmm. just <clears throat> them saying you can be what you are. It's fine. Yeah. No one's going to get pissy with you about it. Oh, yeah. And... Mm. But, uh, so yeah, that's a, so when the anti-gay Stop Safe Schools Coalition heard about this, they hatched a cunning plan. They would buy up all the, um, wait, this was in England, I assume, when this, when this story took place? Yes, the United Kingdom. All right, because I'm guessing that means, uh, 20 pounds, which is $40 in American? Yes, it's, it's $40 give or take. Okay. Basically, what happened was to quote unquote save the gay people from getting to go and actually be happy for an evening. Um, they bought up all the tickets, but what they didn't know was that there wasn't a limited amount of tickets. They were just selling tickets, and mm. because of them buying them up, I think they bought like several thousand or something like that. Then um, they've actually made this group a lot of money so much so that they're renting a bigger space like a much bigger space so more people to go to yes and they're passing the tickets on to actual teams that actually want to go oh yeah that, and that, that's gonna be the controversial part of me um i'm like there are some things i'm divided on when it comes to uh homosexuality because i like i don't like pride parades to be honest um that's the oh, one thing some of them when they get stupid, I don't like them. Yeah, I mean, because they're stupid. Because when you because when you're forcing a kid into the deal, I mean, to me, it's like indoctrinating the kid into religion. Because there's some things they're not understanding about what the heck is going on around them. And I saw like there was like a five or six year old out there holding the sign. It was just in his freaking underwear. 
I'm yeah, like, that, really? I have a problem. I, I'm okay with like taking them to see and say, "See, this is okay." If the well, assuming it's within reason, of course. Yeah. And they're not being stupid. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> then I don't have a problem with that. Mm. That's okay. You should teach kids to be taller. That's good. Good job. Mm-hmm. But like that, uh, that that's just not okay. That's just stupid. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, like how do I? Think? I'm o- I'm okay with most things unless they're stupid. <laughs> Right, as long as it's in a reasonable um, deal. But I mean, I met people like there's this one. Uh, it was a gay Christian that I met, and it was a he was a very interesting person to talk to. Very down to earth, very chill, very mellow, and um, he uh, he talked about how he was married. He, he was in one of those states where you know he able to get married, and he married this guy. Uh, he works as a uh, you know the front desk uh, lady that uh, or guy that's at the front area at the hospital that you go to. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. I forget what they're called. Yeah, but that was that was his occupation. And he was talking it was a another state won the ability to wed gay couples and there was some biker guy. County he was Park. Yeah, and some biker guy uh, got up to go next at the front desk. And he noticed that news came on and then he looked at the the Christian guy and it's like these queers are really starting to turn the world into a living hell hole. Am I right, buddy? Because he thought, because he saw the wedding, the wedding ring on him. Yeah. And he's like, he, he's, they, these gays are ruining it for people like us, right? And he knew what he was trying to get at, and so he just smirked and he just just smiled gently, not trying to be like a douche or anything. But he's like, yeah, I know what you mean. I mean, I'm I'm just gonna go. I'm gonna talk to my husband about how terrible this is whenever I get back home <laughs> and it took like 10 seconds for the guy to realize what was said and when he looked at the ring and then realized what hand it was actually on and oh that's awesome and then he just punched uh, that, that guy out The after thinking about it for a while he just punched him because of course violence is the answer yeah and of course and he was asked if he wanted to press charges and he's like no no I'm not going to press charges he's that's just how it's going to be and because that was the thing that impressed me even more. He was a very mellow, down-to-earth guy. Nothing bothered him. The one interesting thing about him also was that he didn't like the idea of uh, being gay and having sex. He just was uncomfortable with it, and the thing kind of just creeped him out. So all he did was, you know, just hold hands and yeah. kiss. And Important thing to know, people. You can love someone without wanting to bend them over a table. Yeah, I mean, that's how I view it. I mean, if I want to check, I'm not going to be interested in her just because she has a sexy body. I'm going to be interested in that check for her personality and everything. No, it's just, people need to chill out with all the, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, this is coming from my perspective, of course. I'm a little skewed on it, but I think it's just really kind of stupid. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, stop focusing on this petty nonsense. Oh, but she's got a cute butt, but she's a bitch. Yeah, I mean... Move on! I mean, big butts aren't always the solution. I mean, you have to see Nicki Minaj have, has a big butt, yet uh, needs to work on the singing a little bit. No, she needs to stop. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, and I find this also ironic, since we were talking about Scalia. Apparently, Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia's funeral... Was attended by the Westboro Baptist Church. Because of course it was. <laughs> Let me guess, they like him. Um, wait, I'm trying to see, because... Um... I need them to have liked him, because I can't support the Westboro Baptist Church in anything. Oh no, they, they, were, atten- they were attending, but they weren't attending uh, the way you, th- you think. They, uh, they attended so they can protest him. What are they protesting? These people will protest anybody. I mean, these people, before Fred Phelps died, they excommunicated him because he went over to the LGBT house that's right around their church. He, someone overheard him go over there and he t- told them that they, were, that they were good people. Oh, that, that, that there, he being nice to somebody, we can't have none of that. Yeah. Did you see the, uh, there's an interview about it. Do you know who Thunderfoot is? Yeah, I saw Thunderfoot. Did you see the interview, quote unquote interview between him and uh, some of the Westboro people? Oh yes, that uh, was very oh. interesting. 
Thank you for that, so quick. That was awesome. Mm -hmm. And that's that made me find out as soon as I saw more interviews and news articles from them. Um, is that besides being very hyper Calvinistic, I'm a Calvinist, but these people feel way beyond the extreme and be what we call hyper Calvinists. Um, they're not only that, but they're King James onlyists as well. Oh, it's okay then. That's why whenever you hear them in a video, in an interview, especially in the one with Thunderfoot, they always talk about the 1611 King James Version. That's the one they read, and that's the one they prefer you quote. That makes sense now. That kind of makes sense. But yeah. what killed me was, like, and I remember this, I need to rewatch it so that I can do them justice so I'm not like them. Um, I need to f remember this. I'm pretty sure that as soon as he started asking questions about it, they just kicked him out. Yeah, they'll tend to do that. Which I had to admire Thunderfoot for even being able to do something like that. I remember one person named Keefe's uh, talked to Nate Phelps uh, on his deal. That's that's the son, right? I believe so. I think that's uh, either Shirley's son or... Uh, Who was it that left? I know someone left. Um, there's one person... Um, it was I don't the think daughter, it was a, wasn't it? I don't think it, there was one person Yeah, there was a daughter that left from the Phelps. Yeah. And then there was one, I forget what her name was, but she wasn't a Phelps. She was um, one of the other people, though, um, the, the second family that joined the church, and she left. And now she's like, uh, I'm getting paranoid. I'm hearing sounds all over my, my house. Um, but there was a person, and now she leads a, a movement. Scalia's coming for you. Oh, no, Scalia. I know I liked Ronald Reagan, but Scalia, <laughs> you're too terrible for me. Oh, but yeah, the uh, wait, what was I? Oh, yes, dang it. Now, oh, yeah, now, uh, okay, this time I actually know what I'm gonna say, so don't interrupt me, people, and no one Skype or call me for this. The uh, chick she now is running an organization that helps people who leave the church of Westboro to actually, you know, have somewhere to live and get back on their feet because once you denounce the church. You are kicked from the family, and it's in the same manner as leaving a Church of Christ or Mormonism, like Mormonism yeah, no, or Jehovah definitely. Witnesses. Yeah. But speaking of Westboro Baptist Church, I think it's time for some of our people to learn something interesting. And I don't know, maybe we can make this a rare occasion deal. This one is called the Westboro Baptist Church Picket Schedule. So you could see... A Westboro Baptist Church protest near you. What they? That's a lot. What in the world? Why yeah. are there so many? <laughs> well, what we have is their location area. Like in February twentieth, uh, they're going to uh, where is it? Basilia of the National Shrine of the Immaculate Conception in Washington D.C. What? The and and the, oh yeah, it's, okay. So here's the thing. Wait, that's today, isn't it? Yes, it's today. Uh, so, <laughs> and apparently it's already over. So, oh, I yeah. doubt it. But it said Westboro Baptist Church will pick up the funeral of Justice Scalia in the religious protest and warning. The Lord sets up these justices, and by His hand they are cast down. We will take this occasion to remind this nation that it is appointed by God unto man a time to die, and that each man will then himself be judged. I'm trying to see if maybe there's something uh, about They're Scalia. quoting okay. what he preached. To but, yeah, so let's see. Westboro Baptist Church preached directly by to Justice Scalia on the bench in Snyder versus Westboro Baptist Church. He has heard and read this message clearly that God hates fail. We're just going to mark that word out. Um, and that embracing, nope, yeah. brings God's wrath down on a nation. If he could, he would tell you himself to heed this message of eternal life. He would also tell you, Westboro Baptist Church, not to protest his funeral. Or soldier sure. funerals. That's why I hate them. Yeah. I mean, what, happened to, I the, can't stand them. what happened to Jesus when he said, let the, the widows uh, grief in, in silence and in their own personal time? What happened to the justice will weep for the dead? What? Well, well it, it's called cherry picking. They're just doing it differently. Oh, no. These people not only uh, cherry pick, they're like 
on a diet cherry picking. Like they pick <laughs> so few cherries out of this stuff that I mean, it would explain why some of them are skinny and look like they're about to be skeletons. I don't know. Running around to all of these ridiculous protests might wear them out too. Yeah, at least they are forbidden coming from certain to, places. Coming to a theater near you, the West Pearl Baptist Church exercise regimen. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that might get. Maybe that's why they get in shape at some point. So let's see. Okay, they're going to a chapel in California. Uh, then, yeah, like they, they might... protest churches. That confuses me. <laughs> yeah, they uh, protest some that they believe is a. Uh, not. Oh, I know good. why they do it. I'm just like. Shut Let's up. Let's see. These mass, these dog kennels masquerading as churches lie about God in order to get eight thousand. Okay, so this is probably one of those big giant churches. Oh, uh, this they... is the mega churches. Yeah, I have problems with the mega churches for other reasons. Because mm -hmm. uh, you're you're supposed to be taking care of like the poor and stuff. Yeah. Why don't you sell that there plasma screen TV or one of the other nine that you have hanging from the ceiling? Mm -hmm. And here's an interesting thing. Numbers. They keep count of how many soldiers had died in Iraq and Afghanistan. I think that's Why? Something. Why do they care? What does that have to do with anything? They believe that it's important to warn that each uh, soldier being killed is a m number of God killing more people for warning people of the wrath of God. Well, so let's see. Pentecostal Missionary Church. Uh, phony lying. Why are they phony lying? Um, blah, blah, blah. Piss. <laughs> Listen to this. Also known as the Gospel of Jesus Christ. Psst. God does not love everyone. <laughs> what I like, the f I like how they put that there. That's just... <sighs> well, the grammar here is... I know they've been hacked before. Yeah. I know they've been hacked before. I know for a fact they've been hacked before. I wonder if that's what this is. I wonder if they never fixed it. Because like the, the paragraph below it is mm -hmm. perfectly fine. And the one past that and the words at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Everything else is fine. It's just that one. Someone trolled me. <laughs> yeah. So that's let's, part of it. Go back so up. Is there more? Is there more that's messed up like that? Uh, probably, because I noticed their fonts different. Like, you notice that, but then look up here. That's like a little smaller and has a col different color coding. Where's so the could... date on that, uh, the one that's messed up? Is there well, a date on that? Mm, let's see. Where is Oh, yeah. Uh, February 28th, 2016. Hang on. February 28th? Oh, it's the, that's when it's scheduled. Yeah, that's when they're going to protest at 9.30 till 10. Darn, I was hoping there was a date it was put up there. But, <laughs> come on, guy. At least proofread your hate stuff. All right, so some... Okay, so then they're talking about some city of Rishu guy, Master Noel. Or... Okay, and that's it. Uh, so if you're in California, you're going to be getting a treat from the uh, Westboro Baptist people. I just want to walk Pratt past him with a God Loves Fag sign. You can fuck with him. Wow. Yeah, that would be something. I've, I think I've seen that before. I, By the way, I moderated a debate uh, yesterday. Ultimate segue is ultimate. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Um, there was a, it was a debate between uh, just a regular person who was a young earth creationist uh he's going to college he's a freshman in uh, college um, okay so we have the crazy guy who was he arguing against he was arguing against uh he calls himself general han solo on the internet and he <laughs> he's an australian he's an australian physicist and a member of reasons to believe a c christian apologetic ministry dedicating to promote the relationship of science and faith and uh they offer different perspectives. He's that's an old Earth creationist model of yeah. the old, He believes in theistic evolution and uh, showed a old Earth creationist uh, model uh, for the days of uh, Genesis, which I thought thought that was pretty interesting considering what how it was laid out. He said it was the official reasons to believe um, model. Uh, See if I can get. I'm just gonna download the picture. Forget it. That way, it's a bit bigger, and the audience can, who's watching, can see. Yeah, all two of them. Wait, we have two. I thought we had three. We have two now. My my friend Kendra is one of them. Hello, Kendra. Hello, Kendra. Hi. 
I'm going to be talking with a British accent from now on. Just because why? I don't know. Please don't. Okay. All I can say is this in American. Get the London look. Yeah, just just speak American. Okay. Like no, that chick thinks the rest of the world should do. <laughs> Did you see that, by the way? Wait, what? <laughs> There's this video. I haven't seen it in forever. It's like, everyone should just get rid of, like, Spanish and Japanese. You should just all speak American. Yeah, I see that. I was just like, oh, God, it hurts. Yeah, that Brian Fisher guy, he's, he, as I mentioned, at one point back then, he believes that the learning of bilingual, people being bilingual and learning more languages is a sin and is going to result to the destruction of America. That's retarded. I he can't find another word for that. He bases this off the incident of the Tower of Babel where people had one language and then they communicated and tried to reach up to God and live with him. And then God scattered them about and confused their language. Yeah, because we can't have them, them people all working together and not killing each other. Right. That story ticks me off. <laughs> yeah. So, but anyways, here, right? But here's the uh, the official model for uh, their deal, and it's uh, so it has the different time periods: the Cambrian and the Archean, Predozoic, all of them uh, down at the bottom. Then it shows the the point, the billion years of the creation of the Earth, and then at the uh, these bars represent the different uh, time areas for how the production starts for the earth and then they they believe that day in the he because well, hebrew word for day is yom and it has a lot of meanings and one of them and various amounts of them involve a period of time 10 years a century um they're trying to figure out what would be the reasonable point for this and they base it on the scientific evidence of when how long it took for the earth to form the moon formation and the different uh, layers of fossils appearing to show where they believe is how long these yomes or time uh, periods of time uh, lasted for the days in Genesis. Yeah, see, when you start saying a day isn't a day, I start you lose me. Well, that's the thing, though, and I think this is where because a lot of the early Christians, and this is, and though it's not very similar to his argument, some people uh, in the early church would uh, say. That we can't, we see it's impossible for the for at least the first three days because there was no sun or moon. So how will we even know where the twenty-four hour hour period would begin? And then no, they would. See, always... That's a stupid argument. Right, but of that's course not you're... even a good one. Right, but the deal that they were used, using also was uh, that this is in the narrative in the way of the Lord. So they're like, "What's a day to the Lord?" Because that's his perspective of how he's using it. So they'll say. The verse from Psalm saying, well, "A day unto the, the Lord." Here's the question: What came first, the moon or the sun? Mm -hmm. um, I wonder if that's uh, on here, because it says the second thing after Earth forms says Moon forms 4.5 billion years ago. Let me see if Sun's on here. It better not be, or well, there's gonna be a problem because Earth forms is all the way back over here. Hmm. No, nope, see, it's already wrong. The moon and the, the moon and the Earth formed at around the same time. They weren't billions of years off. It was within a few. It was within like one or two billion. Right, but it looks like it's trying to say it's around the estimated time because it's saying Earth forms four point five. It's trying to say five, yeah. That's no, that's not. Well, that's a minor stipulation though, because that's not even on the days yet. Because mm -hmm. so I, I guess that can be forgotten about. That's fine. Because because here's the one thing I heard. I once heard uh, answers in Genesis use this, like saying some have estimated that the Earth is four point five to four point billion years old. Well, that's the case. Why the 500,000 difference? What's That's got to be fishy if you're going to have such a big gap in difference. I'm like... I'm sorry, can you repeat that? I was, I'm was i reading the thing. Uh, there was an argument I heard from Answers in Genesis that said the, uh, the, uh, the estimation that scientists normally give for how old the Earth is is 4.5, between 4.5 to 4.0 billion uh, years old. And they'll say, well, if that's the case, then why is there a 500,000 uh, estimate? Like, the, they're saying that there was a big uh, gap in difference that because of that, we can't trust that uh, estimate. Oh, no, they can. We're just not 
so conceited and self-assured in ourselves that we can say, oh yeah, this is the precise time when everything started. It's our best guess right now. Just mm-hmm. like our best guess on where the sun went at night used to be that it didn't go anywhere, we just turned. <laughs> mm-hmm. We actually know how it all works now. Yeah. And speaking of that, I found it interesting that I still hear... Oh, dang it, my mic. Um, I still find it interesting that I hear the the people who are geocentric and uh, flat earthers that... I, I don't have a problem, really. I mean, if you're, you're in America, like Neil deGrasse Tyson said, believe what you want. But when you become an influence and start uh, making that a view that you need to isolate yourself from people where the people need to be isolated from you because they differ in your view, that's a little uh, damaging. And I, it's, it's, especially has been growing in the Christian community. See, I disagree with Tyson on that. We're all entitled to our own beliefs and opinions, but no one is entitled to their own fact. There isn't a living man, woman, or child that's entitled to their own facts. If you think the earth is flat, you're wrong. You're not entitled to some belief on it, you're wrong move on mm-hmm. we can prove it if we decide to do an episode on flat earth you know who we need to get as a special guest on here who oh. red's rhetoric is that uh, he's a uh, he's he goes by the name of redline as well and he's oh yep i think i know who you're talking about alex i, I actually he wears like a like a bandana yeah, he used to when he had, when you actually saw a webcam on him. Yeah, I know who I know who you're red line fight. Yeah, he he normally uses the Red's Rhetoric channel now and makes a ton of great videos debunking flat earthers. So especially. that explains very quickly why I haven't gotten a subscription alert from him in the forever in a day. Yeah, if you want, I can get you a link to his new channel. Yeah, sure. Drop him in the chat over here. Yeah, but yeah I didn't know about that. But yeah, we should. I'd love to have him on. I'd love to talk to him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So let me see. Uh, I like the science. It's just the language he uses is like, for someone who's very intelligent and with using all these big words, it's like da 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 da. You effing idiot. I'm like, wow, this guy is smart. Oh, yeah. Very down to earth kind of person. Yeah, I mean, I swear. I'm not swearing right now because I know you don't much like it. And, and I appreciate that. That's very yeah. that's cool, man. Thanks. And I try to be polite. Uh, sometimes. <laughs> when, it, when it suits me. When it suits him. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not subscribed to this guy. Yeah, that's that makes that. me sad. I know what I'm doing tonight. Uh, yeah, like, one of the f- my favorite videos so far from him is on a reality check on Parallax and Intellectual Honesty, where he talks about one of uh, Jaronism's videos. You know who he is, right? I know exactly who he is. Him and Redline have been in a big bat- face-off and battle-off over and over and have even debated t- several times. Yeah. And actually recently, do the uh, the he hosts an uh, award deal every year called uh, what, what what's it called? The uh, biggest uh, dumb F-U-C-K of the year award and he'll wait for people to make nominations and Jaronism won uh, the 2015 awards. So yeah, I would have voted for Psy 10. Nah, he didn't <clears throat> get anywhere on that list. Um, there was a G-Man. Um, who else was on there? Um, a, f- a couple flatter. There's Rose, uh, there was a uh, person named Rose Pat. Uh, Patton was on there. Oh, Pillbox. <laughs> and her have gotten on good terms lately, but she still disagrees with a couple of statements of mine. But me and her finally managed to settle our differences. Did you ever watch the um uh, the refining reason debate between um Matt Dillahunty and Cy Ten? Yes, and it was terrible. Yeah, that was amazing. What are you talking about? <laughs> I mean. The Saitan's arguments was just like, no. That's why it was amazing. Just watching Matt go... Just like, what in the world are you talking about? So so here's the thing. Um, 
I was going to um, say, though, um, like, after that, uh-huh. Matt is done with him. He just told him off. He said he's done. Yeah. Because of the chick, the, the chick that organized everything, he refused to take a picture with her. Just flat out refused. Yeah. I thought, like, what the f- Take a picture with everybody else. Mm-hmm. All the guys. What's she different for? Mm-hmm. Anyway, your turn. But yeah, the, uh, Redline made a video called Reality Check on Parallax and Intellectual Honesty. And honestly, if I, I, if I just seen Jaronism's video and that alone, that would have been like, eh, I'm doubting this uh, ISS and Sphere Earth thing. Because what it shows is, uh, uh, what is it, 200, and, 200 miles per hour. It's a mo- he shows a motorcycle going 200 miles per hour, going real fast. And Jaronism's like, that was fast, right? Want to go really fast? How about... Um, 18,000 miles per hour fast, and he shows the uh, ISS uh, space a satellite moving uh, above the Earth. And it's, just, of course, it's, it looks like it's going slow, right? And he's like, far away. And he's like, is, is this fast? I, 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 I want to go fast. I'm, I'm stupid, I guess, because I believe uh, 2,000 miles per hour is faster than eight, 18,000. Okay. And to which Redline was just like, all right, I will give you a few minutes to quit face palming yourselves so that I may continue my video. <laughs> Come on. And then he explains as like, what is going on here is called parallax. That is the distant, the farther you away from a surface leveled object, the slower it's going to appear to see. And you can examine this just by looking out the window of a car that you are riding in next time and then he performs an experiment where he puts a gopro on the bottom of his car and then a gopro on the top of his car and records the same footage showing the different ways of how they appear to be going so he uses a lot of good science yeah there's this thing called proof anything that's true can be proven mm-hmm. so here's the one thing how did uh people like me how did me and Ozpin two complete opposites meet? Well, one thing, we are fans of the show. Ruby. Oh, God. No. The feels. No. I can't. The... <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know. Uh, do you uh, want to discuss? It gives me chest pains. Mm. We're not going to spoil anything for some of y'all. I need a hand. Seen. He needs a hand because he's so sad and lonely. Oh. You know what? No, people. If you haven't watched it by now, it's your own fault. Fuck you. <laughs> Go watch it. Please I mean, now. I, I, love you. I like it. I like the show because it's very interesting in an artwork style. Um, and that show the- went from like, t- like a happy-go-lucky fun time to everyone's dying and being mutilated so fast. Yeah, and I think I don't know. I was wondering. If that, I wonder though if that's intentional though. It is. Monty wrote it. He yeah, I mean, but like, if that direction was like for a reason, like, if, like something to learn from the audience for the audience. It was. Too. It was supposed to be like this is how things are. This is the world. Mm-hmm. What are you talking about? Just because it's pretty and happy now, it doesn't mean it'll stay that way. And it's like Harry Potter to me. It's like ah, oh, the book is so. The first book is so happy and joyful, but then when you read this. Uh, get done with some part of the second and then go onward to prisoner of azkaban and later on wow we have really reached a dark turn when harry is getting older aren't we yeah, well something people need to need to remember when watching this show is we didn't have our first death in season three we had our first death early on in season two when tuxin got killed like they legit just shot him in the face and yeah, that that was like just some bit character off to the side, but that's the point. It was mm-hmm. establishing that characters can die. Yep. And, and there's always been the background. Oh, there's terrorists doing this and that and all that. And like villages oftentimes just disappear and get wiped out. And caravans will be destroyed and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. That's all happening. <laughs> Yeah, in season two, in the breach, they leave. They abandon a, a mission to go help a village, and then never go back, even though John said they would. 
Why would they not go back? There's only one reason. Mm -hmm. That village is Toadstead. By the way, and this might be spoilers for some if we actually decide to talk about this. Have you seen The Walking Dead, Professor Ospin? Yes. I, you could almost say I watch it religiously. Oh, yeah? And did you watch the last week's episode? Yes. Dear Lord. I had I, I didn't I don't watch it on the day it's on because I have to go to work so I have to get in bed by eight o'clock just so I can make it up. I don't um, watch it on the day it's on because I usually go to bed at like seven. Well, looks like we're gonna have a competition. I'm gonna go to bed six from now on. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yes, uh, just that episode was just crazy for me. It was crazy forever. Ah, oh, crap. I accidentally opened Netflix. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna watch more Walking Dead while we're talking? No, I... I opened up the uh, Netflix on my computer. Because mm -hmm. it's a it's a Vista. It's not a Vista. It's a Windows 7. Or no, Windows 8, excuse me. So it's got the app. Uh -huh. I opened it to try and log in, and I can't figure out how to get it off now. So if I go up to the corner of my screen and I click, it just throws me off my screen. Ugh, come on, get, there we go. But like, last last week annoyed the crap out of Quit baiting him. Quit pretending you're going to kill Glenn. Just stop it. Yeah, I already know how he's going to die from after what I heard in the comic. Well, something to remember about that is Maggie's dead in the comic. She was never a character in the comic. The farm... They drive past it. It's destroyed in the comic, because they don't get there when they do in the um in the, in in the show. They don't get there during the summer, when the marshes are there and it's protected and early on. They get, mm -hmm. they drive past in the winter when the marshes dried up and they got hit, and because the, because the group wasn't there, they didn't have enough people to survive. So the show is very different from the comic. Very much so. There are characters that pop up, like the governor is a character that was in the comic and popped up in the show with as the same kind of thing, but the story arcs were different. Mm. Um, I think Glenn dies early on in the comic books. Daryl dies early on. I think Lori's still alive in the comics. I think I can go. I don't know. It's just mm. that they're very different. The... The main character that I'm debating on whether if I should like or not, believe it or not, and this is the ironic case, is the pastor. And no, the, it's a zombie apocalypse. You never like the preachers. Ever. I don't know. But don't. Because <laughs> normally we get to imagine them being a doomsday type, but this guy is more interesting to compare to what you would expect in the stereotypical well, apocalypse kind of a do show. Do you remember last episode when he was praying with all the people? And he was like, and he got up and he like led them to battle. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to tell you how or why, but that's foreshadowing. Mm, yeah, that it's might time. be. He, but, people don't like that. I am, <laughs> I am praying that this uh, is a foreshadow that he's getting his courage up and that it doesn't turn into that he's going to lead the next Jim Jones cult of the zombie apocalypse to then possibly be a religious governor. Well, remember, he left people outside to just suffer and die at his church. Yeah, he. then that's the thing where I, I had the problem with trying to like him is because of his cowardice in yeah. several instances. Like, he would... In instances where he could have made himself and had the opportunity and the advantage, might I add, to make himself known as useful and a hero, he cowarded over selfish him, reasons. To be fair to him, if he had opened the doors when they were when the zombies were there and attacking, that wouldn't have done anything. Everyone would have died. To yeah. be fair, because they were already there. They were trying. They were trying to get him to open the door while they were being attacked. They were already there. They were already dead. Like in a situation mm -hmm. like that, as far as I'm concerned, those people are dead. Right. If if you can, I if you can. Uh, shoot some zombies and help them try help somebody try and get away, but you don't open the doors because then everybody's screwed. Right. You're not going to help anybody. I'm okay with a coward. If the, if you're a coward because you're pragmatic, I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. If you're a coward and you're honest, like Eugene is, I'm okay with that. 
Like, Eugene is the biggest coward, and he's flat up in front about it. He mm -hmm. will flat out tell you, I'm a coward. Mm -hmm. And he has, multiple times. Alright, can you make a little short rant? while I'm, I'm, I'm about to hook my fan up so I can get some cold air. Oh yeah, you're good. Alright, so I'll be right back. The character I don't like is frickin' Rick. Rick is turning into a dick. Because, like, you don't... <sighs> How do I phrase this? Rick is like... You can't just decide that you're the king of the world. And then there's that time when that chick's son got bit, and he just stood there and let her get eaten. No, see, I'd have been covering her mouth and dragging her away. That would have been the pragmatic and intelligent thing to do. But no, we need, we need Rick to lose someone again so he can go berserk. Which, to be fair, he went berserk and just wrecked face. Yeah, pretty much. I, I love the little, like, phalanx that they did. That was awesome. That, just the way that that scene happened, though, in that show, like... I'm t I'm t I was away a bit, but I'm guessing you did tell about the little boy, right? Yeah, I mentioned that. Yeah, um... As soon as I saw that scene, I'm, I'm I paused the TV for like five whole minutes, walking around trying to process what just happened. Because that's one of the things. That's one of the taboos you don't like showing in movies or TV shows. And I think that's the thing where things are getting raw. Like I was watching American Sniper, and I saw the the brutality of is the uh, the Muslim extremists is that. This guy, I forgot what his nickname was, but he was torturing this uh, little kid in payback for getting ratted out by this uh, family. And he takes the he has a uses a drill and basically drills uh, the boy's legs and finishes off by drilling the boy's head. And you hear the screams are raw and very real life like. Yeah, yeah, I know. And that was just like, and I was eating when I saw this happen. I'm like, I'm not hungry anymore. <laughs> Don't eat during ta during these times. I didn't expect it. I, my stepmom was watching it, and I just was eating. And they're going to go do a Bible study. And then I see uh, a, a Muslim extremist leader decide to torture a little boy with a drill. How was I supposed to see this coming? Uh, well, when it's any kind of religious group involved in military ways, I always just assume the worst. <laughs> just if so fact, though, it's a good rule of thumb. Oh, yeah. Because I didn't even know what Sniper was about, generally, My when I was trying to look at the... Like what yeah. Snipers are about, or what the movie was about? The movie. Okay, because I was about to say, Snipers are fairly simple. Yeah, Snipers, you just uh, you hide, and you make sure you shoot. You, you spend a time. You spend a lot of time on your. To quote a friend of mine, you spend a lot of time on your belly, on your belly, getting a lot of head. Insert dirty jokes right here. Well, no, that's actually a joke about shooting people in the face. And that will work too. <laughs> there, you sound more enthusiastic about the first one. Dear Lord, I think I'm going to hell. Um, but not. I'm gonna repent for it. Um, either that, or I can just go to the confession booth. Oops, sorry. What the? <laughs> nice, nice. You got a four out of ten for that one. It was a little weak, but it, it was a metaphor. I opened my mouth to say something, and it didn't work. It didn't work. It didn't work. No, I like how my picture, by the way, is just the top of my head. Leering at everything. Yes. I just noticed that. <laughs> and mine's just smiling. Yeah, I, I, I feel like mine's a creeper of some sort or something. Well, with that bandana or scarf, that doesn't really help to prove your point that you aren't. It's like, I have to say, I'll... don't call it a bandana or I'll ban... Or I'll bandana you from this chat. I don't know. I tried to make a pun. It didn't work. <laughs> uh, that, that, we're going to need to make a... Uh, that could be a good catchphrase or something. A slogan we should use. I, I'll, I'll bandana you out of this hangout. I can't. I tried to be funny and it didn't work. 
Uh, it got a laugh out of me. Oh, no, I was funny, but not for a good reason. I, yeah, it was funny, but not for the reasons you do, assume. Oh, for fuck's sake. That was, that's normally his catchphrase, ladies and gentlemen. That was, you, is, can you English? Can I English? Yes, can you English? What did I do wrong? You're, you're, I probably can't. Your speeching for the last two sentences was not very well. Moving on! <laughs> Alright. So, I'm pretty sure some people are going to get us, want us to get into the saucy uh, bits. Oh, we were in the saucy bits earlier. Well, s blood and gore and zombies may be saucy when you, you know, when you moisten up in that blood, but I think one of the good saucy parts that we should get onto is the one topic that normally causes division in a household. And that is... How to make cookies. I was going to say religion, but cookies is also a good debated topic. <laughs> Which one? Chocolate chip or cinnamon? I like both. Good. Then we're going to get along very well. Alright, so... I'm by cookies. By cook... <laughs> <laughs> by cookies. I'm omni cookies. What are you talking about? All right, so you know what? I'm not even gonna use the book. I'm just gonna pull up my software because that's a better. Yeah, books are so old school. Yeah, digital copies are the new thing, and with the digital copy of a Bible software, I could be reading ten different Bibles at the same time. So take <laughs> that, internet. Or now we just need the chip that beams books straight into your brain. <laughs> All right, so let me uh, get this up. So. Internet. And this is how how big I take my studies on the Bible. Is uh, I got the different Bible versions. Jesus. And and here's the funny thing. I'm so much of a, a histori a historical Bible nerd that um, let's say I think it's the far left one. The first one is either the King James. Second, the second one is the ESV 2011. So I can have at least a modern version to compare it to. Um. I th what is actually you know what I'm just gonna see if I can oh yeah this uh Geneva Bible is the third one and the bishops is the uh the fourth one and then the fifth one is the Coverdale which the Coverdale is the oldest is the 1535 was when this one was made okay yeah so that's where I uh, Are you gonna say that's the oldest one that you know of, or I hope not? Because it, well, it's, it's not the oldest uh, Bible in general. It's the oldest completed Bible. Okay, that's that's 15 centuries. That's a problem, sir. Sir, yeah. we have a problem. Because <laughs> the uh, at least English Bible, anyways. But um, but the uh, William. Oh yeah, because they had to fucking you're not allowed to write this in English bullshit that they had going on for a while. Yeah. Like Tin, like Tyndale, he uh, he's the one that wrote the first parts of the Bible in English, but that was incomplete. He didn't get to complete it all before being thrown into prison and killed because he disobeyed the Catholic Church's teachings from uh, only the... They have to come to the priest to ask them to interpret the Latin Vulgate and get what it means from the priest instead of reading the Bible for themselves. But people didn't kill people for Christianity. Mm hmm. Yeah. Insert sarcasm font. Yeah. This is the one honest thing a Christian's going to say. We killed back back then. There were Christians that killed for the name of Christianity. If you're going to deny these, then you're denying history, my friend. We do it right now. Hmm? It, it, it's happening too right now. It's yeah. still happening. Mm -hmm. Indeed. So let's see. What was I going with? Oh, oh yes, I was explaining what I do for the study thing. Yeah, then there's on the top right co several commentaries I own, which is pre preachers and pastors offering exegesis after their studies on it. Top left, a uh, bottom left is the uh, is a lexicon thing, so I can look up the Greek word or the Hebrew word and get a definition. Well, a lexicanum? Why? Why are we talking about the emperor now? <laughs> lexicon. Oh. So it's basically like a dictionary for the ancient uh, Hebrew. Yeah, Hebrews. I know what it was. I was just making a joke. 
Hashtag uh, Warhammer. 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 Only for war. Anyway. Blood for the blood god. Blood for the blood god. Let me just grab my battle baguettes. Nice. Now, uh, and then the bottom right is, of course, several books I have that are Christian theme. Like, there's a Spurgeon's Grace, um, some uh, church history, Miller history, and then I have the writings of the actual early church fathers, which I find to be an interesting read occasionally. Would you believe me if I said I've never actually read any atheist books? Hmm? Would you believe me if I said I've never actually read an atheist book? I believe you. I mean... Uh, that's the thing. Atheism is isn't really a religion in a sense that like it forces you know you have to do read this to be an atheist. You have to believe exactly this to be an atheist. It's just you know you just don't believe in God and it has nothing to do about what you read. This is true. So, but most know, people have read at least one of them, like the God Delusion or something. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I know uh, one person on the Spiritually Honest uh, Ministries team is uh, he's about to read The Greatest Show on Earth uh, and do a book review on it. Which I think, of, uh, yeah, I uh, went, when I was in college, I saw that in a, in a college library and checked it out. And it was interesting. It was the first time I learned of a, the animal created from artificial selection evolution known as the... Uh, Bulgarian blue cow or something like that. It's basically the gigantic cow on steroids. Yeah. I'm like, I ain't gonna pick a fight with that. No, you're not. Not without a big spear. Mm -hmm. With which you kill it and then make lots of burgers. Right. So, is there anything in the Bible that you want to discuss that you think that we might get into some... Oh dear Zeus. Hmm? <laughs> I said, oh dear Zeus. Oh dear Zeus. <laughs> Help us, lightning. No, no, let's not call Zeus Steer. He might get ideas. We don't uh, need any more Cthulhu monsters. Oh, but, no. <laughs> there's the Greek mythology summed up in one word 90% of the time. Zeus fucked the thing he shouldn't have. There you mm. go. You'll pass every test. <laughs> Insert name here. Insert the name there. So is there any Bible verse that you want to go over or any topic you want to get on there so we could get some good heated topics on this? I think we should have our Bill Maher's heated table style debate. Maybe. Most of my issues aren't as much verse as the story itself. Like, uh, that's where I take issues, is like stories. I don't care about the verses individually. Oh, this version says this happens slightly differently. I don't care about it. The story is the problem, sir. All right, hold on. I hear I'm buzzing. I'm Put your vibrator go. away. That's that's uh, my phone. I'm gonna uh, hold on a second. <laughs> Everyone knows that it's your phone. Relax. Squeaky, squeaky. Alright, sorry about that. And well, I'm always awesome. Yeah, we know that. You've got Thug Life written all over your scarf. Yeah, they just can't see it because I'm, I'm I'm peering over the edges of their monitors, like I'm trying to see them in their underwear or something. I don't know. What? Whose underwear? Men or girls? I don't care. You I'm don't care. Purpose. Would you? <laughs> Ospin. What? You may hate me for this, but. God, what have I done? When help me? Would you? be by any chance be having to looking at Donald Trump's underwear? I will stab you with a <laughs> <laughs> Anyway. Oh dear. I am going to I probably I know what to talk about. This is a good one. The seven deadly sins. Okay. There's a good, That's There's a good one. Alright, seven deadly sins. Not entirely deadly, but let's keep going with it. We're just going to call it that. All right, so what are the... I, 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 honestly, I'm, what are the seven deadly sins again? Um, pride, anger, gluttony. I think lust is one. Um, 
greed. <sighs> Shit, there's one more I can't remember. Hmm. I can see. Google it. Hang on. Okay. Or Bing it because for some reason Google doesn't work on my Google Chrome. I irony. Irony. Google doesn't work on my Google Chrome. <laughs> and I think I've found out why we don't get it. we're not getting as much viewers. Pride, greed, lust, envy, gluttony, wrath, and sloth. Mm. There you go. And why would that be, sir? Because I forgot to send out a direct invite to some of the circles, which normally I noticed when I did that, uh, a couple of hangouts that normally gets it. But I thought it was just because I shared the link. But you had two jobs. I had two jobs. I have two jobs in real life, but I cannot do two jobs on an internet system, apparently. So, oh, well, you said uh, huh? I had a job yesterday. You got a job yesterday. No, I had one. I had, oh, you a had one. I went and I moved 1,600 pounds of drywall. Yes, we know you're big, you're strong, you're muscly. I am tiny skin. I am tiny, skinny, and pale. Then why did you move them bucks? Because monies. <laughs> <laughs> because monies. I that can't a... move my arms want to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear my biceps calling me a douche. Wait, are they still sore now? Yes, it was yesterday. Man. May not mean much. To, I know this may not mean much to you, but I'll be praying for you, and I'll be praying for your arms to recover. Oh, I'll be fine. That way, the uh, you could be back to cuddling things, including fire. Oh, for <laughs> just because I'm so hot, my bed sometimes lights on fire. Because wait, because you're so hot, or the lights too hot? Both. Question okay. mark. Question I don't mark. Know. Let's see. Well, we haven't gotten in here. Uh... Wait, what the? Okay, now we just got a new comment on one of my uh, videos. <laughs> uh, that James White versus Gail Rippling or one. You know, it's one of them King James only topics I deal with. Okay. Uh, let's see, what was it? What does this person got to say? I, I don't even see it. What? What did you do to me, person? Uh, let's see. I don't know. I didn't do it. So. I know. I know you didn't do it. Oh, uh, you invited me to the thing I'm in. <laughs> well, I I put people in my circles, and you're on one of my circles. Hang on. This, there's a guy that wants the. He's wanting the link. Yeah, I got it. No, nah, I mean it's just gonna be me and you. No, I posted the view link. Oh, the view link. Okay. Alright, because, yeah, it's just going to be me and you talking for the remainder. And then we may do an after party. Yeah, that's the thing. We're going to be doing an after party, folks. So don't think we forget about you. Don't you forget about me. But, yeah, also for anyone here, if you want to, uh, if, you, if you have a question that you want, it might be interesting. Just PM one of us. Uh, we might use it. Mm -hmm. <sighs> because raisins. So, anyway, yeah. So, so, so speaking about the Gail Ripplinger thing, yeah, it was just a quote that was talking about uh, the stupidity of Gail Ripplinger's uh, deal. Gail, are you familiar with this name, Gail Ripplinger? Not at all. All right, so here's what she's known for. She made a book called New, New Age Bible Versions, where it's... Um, her basically point in a case that King James is the only uh, inspired word and all the others are influenced by satanic uh, agendas to remove God's word. So wow. basically that's the book that got the movement started, actually. <laughs> wow. Yeah, and she came up with something called acrostic algebra. So and, you use the word algebra. I already hate it. <laughs> yeah. So... And here's what uh, she means by, uh, I'm going to see if I can find a picture of this uh, formula that she uses. Because honestly, it's 
ridiculous. So let me see if I can find it. Uh, she says if you can basically t uh, use your Bible versions or take the different Bible versions that are modern and all that stuff and compare them, you'll see that uh, if you remove the A and the V that stands for authorized version and replace and just uh, keep the other letters in, they all spell out sin. Like, okay, so here's what she does. So step one, take NASV and, my, and NIV. Subtract the A and the V. So if you remove things, then these things work. Yeah, Why so... If you take a puzzle piece and start cutting pieces off of the pieces, then you'll be able to make things that aren't actually what it is. Congratulations, mm -hmm. you're a dumb fuck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, and she was asked about this. She was asked, you know, why do you have this? And... She said the Lord gave it to her. That's why she knows it's accurate. Oh, she's going to play that game. Yeah, that's just stupid. Like, um, you, you can't just be like, well, if you remove all of these letters, then this, these words will spell out this word. No. I can remove, a le remove letters from literally any large title and make it say literally anything else. Because it's cheating. <laughs> Of course you're going to be able to do it. What, what the floof? It's just my... I don't know. I, I guess we're taking a short break, guys. I think he got called away to do something real quick. Um, Welcome back. Yeah, sorry about that. Back. Yeah. It was an emergency, but um, yeah, we're going to uh, end the broadcast here. I think we've gone over a good bit. I'm going to have some fun editing this. Yeah, we'll, we'll get better at the formatting and timing and stuff. And I'll actually invite people to we can get more viewers. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> there's an idea. Yeah. But anyways, uh, thanks for watching, and until next time, we'll, uh, we'll see you then. Sign us off, Austin. Don't be like Zeus. Keep the snake in the cage.